بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين ما بعد رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأحلل عقدة من لساني يفقهوا قولي الله أنفعنا بما علمتنا وعلمنا ما ينفعنا وزد علما يا رب العالمين Respected brothers and elders and sisters الحمد لله uh, We reached mashallah uh, the 10th uh, tafsir session mashallah which also marks the 10th day of Ramadan One third of the month has gone could you imagine how quickly it went by Allahu Akbar huh? Subhanallah. May Allah Ta'ala allow us that in the remaining 20 days that He allows us to do even more, inshallah Ta'ala. And may Allah Azza wa Jal accept from our 10 days, Ya Rabbal Alameen. Uh, mashallah, we are reading from the 14 Jews, but there wasn't anything very notable because our series is on the du'as of the Qur'an. There's not really something very notable in terms of du'as in the 14 Jews. So I want to actually go back to the 12 Jews, or 13 Jews rather, because uh, there was something very beautiful there, which uh, in, Surah, in Surah Ibrahim we covered yesterday with the du'a of Ibrahim alayhi salam. But in Surah Yusuf, Yusuf has a beautiful du'a, a very remarkable du'a. Allah Azza wa Jal, uh, when He gives these beautiful du'as, He gives it on the most beautiful people, which is the Prophet Ali Musalam. And Sayyidina Yusuf has a really amazing, amazing du'a at the end of his story, which I think, mashallah, a lot of us, inshallah, can reflect on and use in our own life, inshallah, ta'ala, because it will give us a lot of things to think about. Because you can imagine, you know, what kind of person was Yusuf alayhi salam? Like, what, what didn't he go through in his life, right? What didn't Yusuf Aysim go through? The hardships he had to go through, experiences, right? At the same time, subhanAllah, betrayal, deception, seduction, all these different things, right? That you hear in all these different movies and stuff. Yusuf Aysim went through all of them. Allahu Akbar, right? SubhanAllah. And along with that, all the happiness and the joy that he had. Everything that he had. At one time, SubhanAllah, he's a bottom of the well. Another time, he's the king of Egypt, you know? SubhanAllah, there's so much that he went through in his life. And at the end, ultimately, what happened was the same brothers that betrayed Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salam, the same brothers that betrayed him in the beginning, subhanAllah, became his lovers at the end, right? His beloveds, mashallah. Along with that, subhanAllah, his father in the beginning of the story was living in a very quaint little house, right, in the area of Kanaan. At the end, subhanAllah, living now in the palace of Egypt, right? There's so much that if you were to think about where he started and where he ended up in, right? And at the end of his story, he actually, he, pra he places his mother and father onto the, uh, the throne, and he places his, uh, his his brothers before him, and they all bow down and make sajda before Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salam, right? Very famously at the end. And then Yusuf alayhi salam at the end, he starts saying some amazing things. He starts saying, Rabbi qad He goes and tells, he says, oh, uh, uh, ya ya min qabl. This is the interpretation of my dream from way back when. Qad rabbi haqqa. Allah has made it true, right? Wa qad bi. He says, and Allah has done so good with me. It akhrajani min sijin When he took me out from the jail. Wa ja'a bikum min al-badu. He took you out from the desert area. You know, after Shaytan kind of poked me and my brother a little bit, caused a little bit of problem between us, right? And subhanAllah, like you can see how no matter what happened in his life, he's uh, he's expressing such joy and happiness of what's happening now. And he says something very important, inshallah, and I'll come back to it near the end. Inna Rabbi latifu lima yasha. Allah does very subtle and very gentle the way he does things. Allah is very gentle and subtle the way he does things. Right? Inna huwa al-alimun hakim. Then after Yusuf Aizm begins the dua, and the dua is a very remarkable dua. It says, Rabbi, qad ataytani min al-mulk. He starts off by saying, Oh Allah, surely you've given me from the kingdom. This remarkable kingdom of Egypt. The things that he's experienced and received because of this kingdom. What did Yusuf Aizam receive from this kingdom? Number one, first and foremost, Alhamdulillah, it was able to bring his parents back to him. Number one is, he was able to bring his parents back to him. Because of this kingdom that is before him, mashallah, Sayyidina Yusuf Aizam was able to do khidmah of his parents. Because of this kingdom that he had, he lived to khidmah of his parents. I mentioned this because why? Subhanallah, as a Muslim, you must understand the value of mal, the value of wealth, the value of a kingdom, the value of good, these types of things. Normally, subhanallah, you would not praise, you would not think to thank Allah Ta'ala for dunya. But Nabi, Nabi Yusuf is teaching us something that when you get when you get the world and you use it in the right way, this is something you should make shukr for. You should thank Allah Ta'ala for. So say that Yusuf Aizm starts off his dua by saying, Ya Allah, I thank you for the kingdom of Egypt that you gave me. Because why? Because now he can do khidmah of his walidain. He can do khidmah of his parents. What is the biggest, what is the biggest ni'mah in life that you're able to take care of your parents? So now, subhanAllah, they're old now, right? Yaqub alayhi salam and his, his wife are very much old now. Yusuf alayhi brings them to the palace. Now he can serve them well, subhanAllah. Where is Yaqub alayhi salam's uh, qabr? You know, they mentioned very famously it's in the area of Egypt. Why? You know, like subhanAllah, because of the fact that Yusuf alayhi took care of his parents till their death. That's what it is, right? MashaAllah, number one. Number two, subhanAllah, by the means of the kingdom, Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi brothers came back to him. And they were able to, MashaAllah, they come to him in a very subservient, a lowly status. Not like someone who is exalted or above Yusuf alayhi Rather, they humble themselves before Yusuf alayhi This is the barak of the kingdom. 
The third thing that Yusuf is thanking Allah Ta'ala for is that the mulk, the kingdom which Allah Ta'ala gave Yusuf Islam, by means of this kingdom, he saved thousands upon thousands of people from famine and death. From famine and death. This is the most beautiful thing when you have mal. Nabi said, How good is good money? How good is pious, righteous money in the hands of a pious and righteous man? Nabi is telling us, When you have wealth, you can help lots of people. Yusuf has the whole kingdom of Egypt before him. What did he do for the rest of the time? The next seven years, he cultivates, as you know, very much in the dream, right? He takes care of the, uh, the, um, the produce and the zara'a. He takes care of all the different, um, the cultivation of the land. And he, he grows as much wheat and crop and produce. And next year, seven years, he stores it. And then the years that come after that is the drought. And in that time, what happens? All the people from Egypt come. All the people of Kanaam come. All the people of Sham come. All these various areas come to the who? To Yusuf a.s. For Pana, for Igasa, for help. And what does Yusuf a.s. do? He provides to every single one of these people. And Qiyamah, what can he expect in Ajr by Allah Ta'ala? That he's provided this many people, subhanAllah. This is what happens, mashallah, when you have mal in the hands of a good person. SubhanAllah, people, mashallah, are looking at these people these days. And they're thinking about, oh, look at this Elon Musk and Jeff Bozos, whatever. SubhanAllah, they, they, are, they are less than the, the janaha ba'uda. They're not less than the wing of a mosquito because they don't do anything good with their mal. All they do is what? They cross corruption in the world. And subhanAllah, when they could say something and change the world and help people in Palestine, there's no thing, nothing that's being said from them. Rather, they're thinking, how can they profit from such things? Could you imagine such people in this world? Subhanallah. Flip this and think about Sayyidina Suleiman alayhi salam. What an amazing person he was. What did he make with his money that he had? Allah Ta'ala describes what he used to make. He made, he made mihrab. This is a mihrab. Okay? This is a very tiny mihrab. In ICB, Burlington, Masha. Very nice mihrab, but very tiny. You come to our countries, they have like three times the size of this, at least. Okay? You get to the bigger masajid, it's probably going to be a whole row, the mihrab size, subhanAllah. You get to the, the masajid that the sahaba built and the mihrabs that they used to have, and the mihrab of Sayyidina Sunnah alayhi salam. These are extraordinary. Why did they make these? Because these are places where, subhanAllah, where Allah Ta'ala's izza, Allah Ta'ala's majesty and glory is being worshipped. This is why they made such things, to show that this is Allah Ta'ala's qadr and quwa and power in this world. But what else did he make? What tamathil and these different structures and, 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 and monuments for Allah Ta'ala. These different uh, masajid for Allah Ta'ala. This is what Sulaiman used his money for. What did he make? What, uh, he made these huge basins. You know, these, these digs. I mentioned this one time, I think, in a tafsir somewhere. These, these huge basins that he used to make. And what did he used to do with them? Uh, he used to, they, they were made as either for reservoirs of water, so people can drink from them regularly, or he used them to cook food. Qudur Qudur in Arabic literally is pots. He made these huge pots for what? To feed thousands upon thousands of people. This is Sunnah alayhi salam. These Anbiya alayhi salam, when Allah gave them kingdom, all they thought about is how can they serve the world. To the point in a riwayah, it's mentioned by Yusuf alayhi salam, when they said, oh Yusuf, why have you abandoned all the good food in the world? You're not eating well anymore after you became king. He said, how can I eat well? كيف أشبعوا والناس جيعوا? How can I eat well while the people are hungry? These are the people that we used to leave behind. So this is our turat. This is what it means when you're a Muslim. Don't look at the bozos and the musk of today. Look at the Sulaiman and the and the Dawood of the past. So, so you, Yusuf is praising Allah Ta'ala for the kingdom. Oh Allah, you gave me this kingdom, subhanAllah, this mulk. And then what? min hadith. You have taught me from the interpretation of speech. And I told you it can mean, very famously, it can mean interpretation of the dreams. Or it can mean the fact that every single conversation that Yusuf had in his life, he knew exactly what to say, okay? Interpretation of speech means that you know what to say when people say it to you. And if you look through the story of Yusuf alayhi salam, I guarantee every time he spoke, it was just the right thing every single time, subhanAllah. It's amazing. I don't have time to go through it. Today is not the time for this discussion. More to understand, Yusuf alayhi salam is thanking Allah for the dunya he gave him, rather the world that he gave him. And Allah ta'ala, I thank you for the fact that you gave me the interpretation of speech. Why did he put the kingdom before the, the, the prophetic blessing though, you know? You usually would talk about Allah, you made me a prophet and then a king. But he flips it, why? Because number one is that the interpretation of the dream, where is it found? The interpretation of the dreams is found in the kingdom. So Yusuf Ali says, Ya Allah, more important than the interpretation of the fact that I could read the dream, that you showed me the dream, which is the kingdom, subhanAllah. Where did Yusuf Ali find all of his dreams, all the different things that he met the people, where did he find them? Because he had the kingdom in the first place. And the other thing is that what? External, you speak when you talk to Allah, you talk about your external blessings first. When you talk to Allah, 
Talk about the apparent blessing. Say, Allah, you gave me house, you gave me family, you gave me wealth, you gave me kids, you gave me so many things, Ya Allah. And Ya Allah, you gave me mind, you gave me heart, and you gave me iman, Ya Rabbul Alameen. You start speaking external to internal. This is Yusuf Alayhi making dua. That's what he teaches us. And third thing is, which is very important, the mulk which Yusuf Alayhi is talking about is not only the physical one. The mulk, the kingdom which Yusuf Alayhi is talking about is not only the physical one. In reality, the kings of this world are the Anbiya. The kings of this world are the Prophet ﷺ. The ones who actually rule the whole dunya are the Prophet ﷺ. Because who are they working on behalf of, brothers and in Islam? Who do they work on behalf of? Allahu Rabbul Alameen. He sent them as his deputy, as his khalifa in the world. Who could be a greater person than a Nabi? He is the true king. If you understood this, they understood that Yusuf ﷺ was not saying, Ya Allah, you gave me physical kingdom only. Ya Allah, you gave me spiritual kingdom. You gave me mulk and azima. You gave me a, a nabawi kingdom, a prophetic kingdom. That's why the Anbiya can leave behind, leave behind inheritors which are the ulama, the scholars. And the scholars, I tell you, subhanAllah, when you meet a, meet a real alim of deen, shandar hota, subhanAllah. They're amazing people, these ulama. They're people, subhanAllah, you, you, you already feel like your tongue is twisted before speaking to you know, a, a person of worldly stature. But when you come before a, a real alim of deen, you feel like you don't know what to say anymore. Many times, subhanAllah, we'd sit in front of Hazrat Mufti Pampuri, rahmatullahi And subhanAllah, I tell you, I see these ulama 25, 30, 30 years of experience giving fatwa. Right? They are people who write and they sign off on fatwa. They sit before Mufti Pampuri, 70, 80 years old, and they look like little children. And subhanAllah, when an alim of deen comes before you, this is all the inheritance of the Prophet. The amount of, of, of ru'ab, the amount of, of like, of, of, of awe and reverence that Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu had. He said Sallallahu Alaihi anyone who, who comes in a, a month's journey of me, any enemy that comes in a month's journey of me, they would fear me just by being near me for one month, one month's journey, SubhanAllah. Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi some people SubhanAllah were so overwhelmed by the, the awe of Rasulullah Alaihi Wasallam, some people started to shake and quake because of how Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi used to be. And one person SubhanAllah, he, he I think his name was Rabi'i, uh, uh, Rabi'i, he saw the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and immediately he took Islam. He said that this man is, 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 too, is too great for this world. Allahu Akbar sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa they leave behind for the inheritors. Nabi Yusuf alayhi wa he says all these amazing things. He said, Allah, you gave me kingdom. And Ya Allah, you gave me this prophethood. Fatira samawati walad. You are the creator of the heavens and the earth. Ya Allah, what is my kingdom compared to your kingdom? This is what he says. Fatira samawati walad. You are the creator of the heavens and earth. What is my kingdom compared to your kingdom? Ya Allah, what is my house Compared to what you have. Ya Allah, what is my home compared to what you have? Ya Rabbul Alameen, what do I have really compared to what you have? This is what it is. Fatira samawati wal ard. Forget about it, Ya Allah. I, you gave me this and this, but what do what am I compared to you? Fatira samawati wal ard. Anta waliyi fit dunya wal akhirah. This is the thing, subhanAllah. How Yusuf is thanking Allah that I can't tell you in enough words. Anta waliyi fit dunya wal akhirah. You are my caretaker in this, heaven, in, in, in this world and in the hereafter. You are my guardian. You are my helper, you are my provider, you are my wali, Ya Allah. Everything is in your hands, Ya Rabbul Alameen. Whatever you want, it's what it is, right? And this is what it means. I want everyone to reflect on this, okay? Where are you, Sayyidim, is coming from? This idea of Allah ta being Latif. Latif is a very ajib thing. Latif is like, you know, um, the blood in your, in your veins. You know the blood is there, but you don't really feel it. You just know it's there. Similarly, like the pipes, right? The pipes are, you know, water is going through them. They're doing so much, but you don't really notice it. It's very subtle. What's even more subtle than that? The oxygen that you breathe, the, 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 the nafus that you have, you don't even notice it. It just goes in and out all the time. The fact that you start thinking about it, you actually start panicking, right? SubhanAllah. Right? But it's just so subtle. I'll tell you, Allah is even more latif than that. Right? Let's look at the story. Just understand, reflect just really quick, inshallah. It's a nice story. Indulge me for like one minute, inshallah. You, in the beginning of the story, Yaqub alayhi salam, he has tremendous love for his son Yusuf. Unbelievable love for his son Yusuf. This unbelievable love, this mahabba shadida li, li waladihi, the love that he has for his son actually pushes his, his other sons to hate Yusuf alayhi salam. So then what do these sons do because of the love of their father? They take Yusuf and they throw him in a well. And they are planning at this well to leave it in this random location that no one's going to go by. right? In a random well, no one's going to go by. Yet subhanAllah, in the middle of nowhere, Suddenly, at the right time and right place, these travelers come by and they take this boy Yusuf outside from the well. Allahu Akbar, right? When they take them out, the Yusuf is very happy. But what are they? They're slave traders. The slave traders go to Egypt. They go to Egypt. At that time, coincidentally, while Yusuf is being brought into this, the slave market, the minister is walking by. Allahu Akbar. 
The minister walks by and says, Oh, this boy is really good. I can use him for the house. They bring him home, subhanAllah. They care for him. They nurture him. They raise him. Then what happens is the wife of the minister, after raising the kid for so long, has some mahabba for him. What the heck? How does this happen? What is this Bollywood movie? SubhanAllah. After this, Allahu Akbar, she, she tries to do such terrible things to him. Allah Ta'ala saves him. Thereafter, what do we find? Yusuf Alayhi Salam is being pushed and pushed and pushed. He is finally put thrown into jail because of the fact that he was in the house of the minister. After being thrown into jail, he meets these two prisoners at the same time he's entering the jail. These two, these two young guys entered the jail with him. One of them has a dream he's going to be crucified. The other one's going to become the wine pourer for the king. Subhanallah. What are the coincidences? What is the chance that he's going to meet the right guy at the right time? Then he tells the man, please remember me once you leave. He forgot about him for like something seven plus years or something like that. The seven years later, subhanAllah, the king has a dream. <laughs> you know, Allahu Akbar. At that time, the guy who forgot way back remembers Yusuf Alayhi Salaam. Yusuf Alayhi Salaam is taken out from there, subhanAllah. After he's taken out, he was, he was brought into the position of the prime minister of Egypt, mashallah. And one, one day, finally, the king himself steps down, makes Yusuf Alayhi Salaam to the king of Egypt. At that time, subhanAllah, the same brothers that were way back in the story, Allahu Akbar, come back years and years, 14, 15, 20 years later, come back and see their brother Yusuf Alayhi Salaam, now the king of Egypt, subhanAllah. And now what? Ultimately, you know the story at the end, and it continues and continues. And then finally, what do you find? Everyone's making sajda for him. This all started off with mahabba that Yaqub had for Yusuf Alayhi Salaam. And how did it end? With Yusuf Alayhi Salaam repaying that mahabba and bringing his father out of from Canaan into Egypt, right? The mahabba, the love that his father had in the beginning, that same mahabba that Yusuf Alayhi repays at the end of the story. This is Latif. That something so small in the beginning is able to cause this kaleidoscope and this, this chain reaction of things that led, led you to where you are. And people are impressed from the story. But I tell you, Wallahi, that every single one of you has the same story. Every single person in this community has the same story. You and I went through such ajeeb things. A job popped up. A wife popped up. Children popped up. Something where Allah Ta'ala just made an occurrence happen. Allah Ta'ala's latifness showed. And subhanAllah, life got organized. This is what Allah Ta'ala, this is Allah. Everyone, you think about your own life. This is what you started telling us. You are my wali, ya Allah. How could I not trust you? This is what you have to understand. How could I not trust you? There's so many blessings that you and I could never even imagine. If you don't understand, look at anyone who doesn't have a ni'mah in this world. Look at the Philistine people and subhanAllah, tell yourself what ni'mah you have in this dunya. And thank Allah Ta'ala. We're so ungrateful to Allah. And then he says, Ya Allah, forget about kingdom. Forget about this and this. The, the heights of humility are found in the next part. Allah, tawaffani muslima. Allah, take me away in this world, not as a king. And prophets, whatever, this is big stuff, ya Allah. Ya Allah, let me die as a Muslim. Tawaffani muslima. You give me so much in this world, ya Allah, I don't want to leave this world without kalima. Tawaffani muslima. Ya Allah, and when you take me away from this world, wa alhiqni bis salihin. Don't connect me with the kings. The kings are going to have a difficult time in the hereafter. And I'm not telling you, subhanAllah, from the wealth that you have, again, the wealth that you have does not make you a king. What you do with the wealth will decide where you are. What you do with the wealth will decide what you are. You can be, subhanAllah, with your hands doing business, but your heart can be the heart of the pious. SubhanAllah, the Nabi Sallallahu said, Ataju Sadukul Amin. Remember this. The truthful, trustworthy businessman. Ma'an Nabiyin was Siddiqin was Shuhada. On the day of judgment, the trustworthy, truthful businessman will be with the martyrs, the prophets, and the righteous people. SubhanAllah. The martyrs, Allahu Akbar. Why? Because this man lived a very good life. No matter what dunya you have in the world, that does not define you. What you do with the money is what defines you. Yusuf is teaching us, Tawaffani Muslim al Ya Allah, I don't want to be connected with, with the, the kings and the, the Fir'aun and the Haman and all these people. Ya Allah, I want to raise with Suleiman and Dawood and Nabi Muhammad I want to raise with the pious people, Ya Allah. I want to raise with Ishaq and Yaqub. I want to raise with these people, Ya Allah. This is Nabi Yusuf after getting the whole entire dunya, the king of Egypt, whatever, whatever. He said, Ya Allah, when you take me away from this world, make sure I leave with the kalima, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, make sure that I leave with the, the, the and connect me with the pious people. And this is a beautiful reminder from Yusuf It's a reminder for everyone that look, if you want to survive in this world, like why is it, SubhanAllah, we're having this tafsir class every single day? Because we need to connect with the pious. Sayyidina Yusuf said, connect me with the pious people. Connect me with the Sadiqin. You need to connect with the pious. This is not a this is not a, a mustahab or okay if I get it or not. This is a wajib of fard for your deen. Wakunu ma'as sadiqin. You must find pious people and connect with them. This is the only way you're going to survive. You so I say, Allah, take me away and let me connect in this world with the pious people. Hey Allah, take me away with the pious people. That's what we want, inshallah. Ta'ala. You need this ilm, you need this. Because think about it for yourself. 
how much deen do you actually get to talk about in the day? Be honest, right? SubhanAllah, we're probably talking about numbers and business and so on. This is probably the only time you heard a prophet's name all day. SubhanAllah, you need, this is nourishment for your soul to hear about du'as, to hear about anbiya, to hear about good things, subhanAllah, you need these types of things. I need these things, right? Everyone needs these things. He teaches us a profound way to protect a person's iman. So remember this dua, Fatira samawati wal Allah, the creator of the heavens and the earth, Anta waliyi fi dunya wal akhira, you are my wali in this life and thereafter. Tawaffani muslima, Allah, take me away as a Muslim, wal hiqni bis salihin. Okay? And my final thing to remember, to remind everyone is, that again, subhanAllah, I mentioned this, I stress this point, that the, the Muslims were never poor people. Like, subhanAllah. Yeah, Allah Akbar. Abu Bakr radiallahu was he poor? Nah, subhanAllah, right? Uthman radiallahu anhu? Right, subhanAllah. Abdurrahman bin Auf? You know, the richest man in the world, right? Who was he? Mansa Musa, right? $400 billion. That's his net worth. He passed away a long time ago. Rahmat right? SubhanAllah. Sulaiman alayhi salam? Dawood alayhi salam? Yusuf alayhi salam? SubhanAllah, they were not people of lowliness in the dunya, but they kept dunya in their hand, not in their heart. SubhanAllah, how great is it, mashallah? I tell everyone, inshallah, we never tell anyone, look, Mulan is not looking for your money. <laughs> really, trust me. Mulan is looking for the fact that you get to connect with Allah. Do what you need to do in life so you can connect with Allah Ta'ala. So do what you can do with your wealth to connect with Allah. That's all we care about. And whatever sadaqah you give, I'm telling you, you can always give a little bit more. We are a little scared for ourselves. I tell you, trust Allah Ta'ala when you give and watch what Allah can do with that sadaqah. He'll make a, 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 an amazing life for you, inshallah. May Allah the grant of and tawfiq. Let us teach us in the du'as. Someone asked me actually if I can compile these du'as. Tomorrow, inshallah, I have a whole set for you. We did the first 10 days, right? So then you can read them. You read all the du'as, you're like, wow, this is very short. It's going to take you 30 seconds to read the du'as, but you receive so much benefit from them, inshallah. So may Allah grant us all the I'll get you all for tomorrow, inshallah. May Allah accept it.